So when you're walking around in the forest and you're looking at all the beautiful plants and you will most likely see nice big clumps of moss on stumps or across the forest floor or growing up the side with the northern side of trees. Well, when you look up onto this tree and you then see these interesting moss-like growths, well, you're looking at lichens. So the first thing I would actually probably say is never harvest it off a tree. Now the reason I'm saying that is because it takes two to three years to get, gather to a very small size. And once it falls off the tree, um, well obviously you can gather it, it's obviously been windswept or whatnot, but whatever is still on the tree still can grow larger. I just found a branch on the floor here and it's absolutely covered with them. So anytime it's a windy day, you just go out in the forest and you'll be able to find some of this fantastic, beautiful um, usnea. So lichens are also known as old man's beard because of their beard-like appearance. And they're also called tree moss because they grow on trees and they look like moss. Um, but they've had a long-standing traditional use. If you look at the Native Americans, they would have used them for gangrenous wounds and in uh, traditional Chinese medicine for urinary uh, infections or tract diseases and also as an immune support against disease generally. Even in Europe they would have used it for upper respiratory uh, diseases like coughs or bronchitis. You have its use for the scalp because of its hair-like appearance or um, in Ireland specifically they used to boil uh, lichen up with tobacco in butter and then apply the warm butter on an infected eye to actually treat it and, and, and possibly cure it. Um, which to be fair makes sense chemically speaking or biochemically speaking as it contains really incredible ingredients such as usnic acid um, and a whole lot of other polyphenols and antioxidants. This one is quite a common one that you'll find out there. Um, again, I don't know as much on this, I haven't really done as much research on it, but I do know that it's called, uh, people called oak moss, uh, Evernia prunastri, um, and it has been used as a painkiller, so it contains very similar compounds as the uh, old man's beard. Old man's beard is an incredible antimicrobial. So especially against gram-positive bacteria, such as, as staph, uh, streptococcus, um, also uh, the bacteria behind uh, tuberculosis. It is a powerful antiprotozoal, protozoa being uh, single-celled organisms. Um, in, in particular, trichomosis. So trichomosis is a disease that affects messenger pigeons or racing pigeons, and this uh, is actually used to treat these birds and also to treat uh, human beings. What they used to say is it actually also draws the traits of whatever plant it grows on. So maybe perhaps if it's growing on a pine tree it's going to be slightly more um, antiseptic or helpful for your cough. Maybe if it's growing on a oak, it's going to be slightly more stringent. Now you can ingest it in a tea, you can ingest it, ingest it as a decoction, you could even make a broad spectrum extract. Usnea is also quite a bitter herb. So bitter herbs in general are considered as bitter tonics. So they act on your liver and they help and aid digestion and also stimulates enzymes and the production of enzymes or even it contains enzymes itself. So you've got a very good gut, all over gut herb as well. So the old man's beard has been found to be a powerful antifungal um, and it's been used in the treatment of ringworm uh, athlete's foot and even candida, um, either internally or topically. And in fact, that's uh, why a tradition, one of the traditions that's been out there was to actually do a sit bath of usnea um, for women who have uh, candida, uh, albicans, and to help treat it. And it works. Well, it's supposed to work anyways. Um, and under the, uh, in the lab, it also works. And that's quite an interesting, incredible thing. I love when things work, you know? They've actually indicated it in tradition from uh, Culpeper to 
even the traditional Chinese medicine, as an analgesic for headaches. And they do have a compound in this, I forget the name of it, but it actually is known to be an analgesic, an analgesic being a painkiller. They've discovered things uh, that point that this could be useful as an anti-tumoral herb, and that could be partly to do with the antioxidants or possibly the other things that are in it, like the beta-glucans that are helping stimulate and support the immune system. And there's the usnic acid, which is an anti-infective and a powerful anti-inflammatory. And that's just one component out of the thousands, possibly, that are found in this. It's been tested against the likes of herpes simplex or HPV and also uh, chronic fatigue. And it's been seen to actually work really well for these conditions. Uh, now, chronic fatigue is usually linked to some form of post-viral uh, fatigue. Uh, where you got a virus, say the flu, and for the next few weeks you're just completely floored because your body really took a lot of uh, work to try to actually fight it. For deep-seated viral infections, you know, you're wanting to treat your herpes, you want to see if that's going to work, go on for seven days and then stop for four or five and allow your gut to, to recover. It's a non-specific uh, antimicrobial, so you just want to be mindful about that and take it as a medicine um, and not too frequently. It was also used as a hair wash because it looks like hair and this is called the Doctrine of Signatures. And funny enough, still to this day, you're actually getting anti-dandruff shampoo that contains Usnea barbata in it. So next time you're out in your shop and you see anti-dandruff shampoo, have a look for Usnea in the ingredient list. And you may be surprised, you'll find some of this in it. Um, so, I mean, an alternative would be if you find some of this in the ground and you suffer from dandruff or dry hair, then go back home and boil some of this in a pan and give yourself a little hair wash with it. There you go, free anti-dandruff shampoo. It's not a plant. It's not really a fungi either. It's everything. It's, it's just a whole pack of... Um, interesting little organisms from the planet who decided to bunch together and have a little family. And in fact, that kind of shows you uh, the importance and the harmony um, that exists within nature, you know, something that we often forget about. Because, you know, we always talk about, you know, oh, it's survival of the fittest. Well, the more I've been working with plants, the more I'm realizing that this is kind of untrue. Um, there's truth in it but it's also survival of the community. And the plants, the fungi, even the herbs, the birds, the animals, they're all working together in this one ecosystem to keep it alive. And as a whole, they're actually working together. Every little bit counts, even me standing here. And I suppose when you're going out for a walk, trying to tune into this and to realize that you're part of this entire experience and the forest is experiencing you as much as you're experiencing it and that everything you do has an impact then you actually will realize how much we need to actually respect nature and how much we can actually find beauty and interesting things about it so anyways that is my little rant about appreciating and enjoying nature and spending more time in it. So I hope you had a lovely viewing of my video and well, until next time.